But this is how police dealt with uh, people who wouldn't go home last night. You saw it right here live on CNN, on CNN Tonight. A protester later identified as Joseph Kent nabbed by officers in riot gear, pushed into a Humvee, and he was held on a charge of curfew of a curfew violation. And his attorney joins us now. His name is Stephen Patrick uh, Beatty. He joins us now. I want you, uh, Stephen, thank you very much for, for joining us. This it's evening. my pleasure. But let's watch what happened last night as we were live here on the air, and then we'll talk about it. So we'll look at it a couple of times. This is him. He walked across. He's, and then you see him. Right, he walks across with and his then, hands up. So what was he trying to accomplish first by, by walking in front of officers last night? What did he tell you? Well, Mr. Ken is a well-known community activist. Uh, he, he got national attention when he did uh, very much the same thing during uh, Baltimore's response to the Ferguson protests. He yeah. uh, is known as a, as a peacemaker. And, I, and I, if you listen to the audio of what happened just before the clip that we've seen, uh -huh. he uh, is heard telling people to disperse, to go home. Uh, which is exactly what got him so much positive attention yeah. uh, in the fall. But the officers also on the other side of uh, when he walked out of the street here last night, um, this is where rocks and things were being thrown at police. So police may have thought that he was part of that crowd. Again, and again, uh, Chris Cuomo said the same thing on our air last night. Maybe they thought he was. Now he is walking with his hands up, but he's talking to media. He's telling media, go home. You shouldn't be on the street. We have every right to be there. We were told to uh, be there. Absolutely. So, but what it doesn't show is what happened before this, where he was telling protesters the same thing. Right. Uh, a helicopter at that point had just uh, unlawfully, I should add, uh, told media to go home. A police helicopter made an announcement, media, leave the area immediately. Uh, they almost immediately rescinded that order. But what his position was is that the protesters there who were beginning to get hostile were like moths drawn to a flame. Yeah. Uh, he obviously, the press has a right to be there. Uh, but. His opinion was is that it was making it worse because it was egging people on because they wanted to get on camera. And he's a peacemaker, and that's when, what he was trying to do. When I was trying to, to get in touch with him today and to get in touch with you, I spoke with two people who knew him, and they said, yeah, he's a good guy. But quite honestly, you know what they said to me? They said he should have had his butt at home last night. That's what they said to me. Well, what he did, he did out of conscience. Right. He went out there to try to settle things down because he'd seen what happened in this city previously, and the last thing he wanted was any any more okay. violence, and he was trying to stop it. All right, so I, I, I had to get that out there. But did, so when uh, did he explain that to police? And they still arrested him. He's still involved in in the. If you system? watch, if you watch what he's still in jail right now, and we're working uh, very hard to try to get him out. We're working hard to expedite uh, his, uh, his. He hasn't even been seen by the commissioner. You yet. met with him. Did you meet with him today? I did. I and got to speak to him, to him face to face. Happened. Well, I went in to see him, and the reason, the main reason that I did that is because uh, there was a huge uproar. I was getting uh, uh, thousands and thousands of Twitter requests to go uh, and, and locate him, which I did late last night, and then go to see him just to verify that he was safe because of the nature of the way that he was taken. Mm -hmm. uh, I was able to finally get to see him today around 2.30. We had about a 20-minute face-to-face talk, and uh, he told me that uh, he's fine. Uh, he's physically okay. He's not injured. He's safe in there. Uh, everything is fine. He's eager to get out, and we're eager to get him out, and we're hoping that that happens very, very rapidly. Uh, but what he wanted me to tell people most was that he doesn't want any violence in his name. When he heard from me how many people were so upset and the nature yeah. of the tweets and messages that I was getting all day in the thousands. So you, you, it's a misunderstanding. So the people, the people I spoke to who knew him today, they, you, you're saying they don't know the whole story. Well, no, what I'm saying is that uh, you could also say that uh, anyone who, who does something brave uh, to try to do something good for others uh, could have had their butt at home. Yeah, that's, but that's what I'm saying to you. That's exactly what I'm saying to you. They don't know the whole story. Exactly. He's trying to do something good, and they're saying maybe he should, he should have been at home and not been in the middle of it. But in, in his estimation, he's trying to do a service. He, he, he can't help but do things good for his community, and he's trying to do that. And whether or not he should have been at home is a discussion for another day. But I think the right. broader issue here is, is was his motivation. And someone was trying to do something good uh, in, in the face of something bad. And I think we should respect that. And he protested. He's a college sophomore, right? Yes, he is. At Morgan. And he protested, uh, protested uh, during the Fergus, during Ferguson not only, well. not only Not only protest, but he was one of the people that was instrumental in keeping those uh, protests as peaceful as possible. He was out there on television getting national attention for 
uh, urging peace and calm and restraint, and that's who he is, and yeah. that's what he wants. And he, lo he he loves he loves his community. He loves the Western. And he was trying to keep at peace. What peace did you, what did he say? What was his reaction immediately when that Humvee came toward him, and then the officer? What he told me is he barely knew anything until he was already uh, swarmed by officers. He said he didn't hear the Humvee, he didn't see the Humvee. He, uh, he was doing what I have been, uh, the reason I've been out at the protest was to, to, to teach people from a constitutional perspective what they can do at a protest and what they can't to try to keep people safe. Well, can he, he do did, what he, he did what I teach people okay, to do. Okay, so he was fine because he walked towards the media and then he walked right in front of the officers. Yes. Do you think the officers thought that there was a threat even though his hands were up and they got guard, Sure, and he also and noticed guns. the cadence at which he was walking. He was walking so slowly and what I teach people and what, what anyone who knows about peaceful protests and what to teach people to do tells people is, you put your hands up if you're if you have to approach the line you put your hands up here it is watch it so he's walking here and then see his hands are already up right. and he's walking very very slowly because he wants his police officers to know he is not a threat to them that he's trying to help that's why he walks in front of the line the way he does and you'll hear i don't know if you have the audio here yeah, we do. We're, we're but here. you can hear him saying uh can everybody, saying, can everybody hear me, me? can right. everybody hear me right. and then he says disperse now that that particular word is the word that we we tell people when we coach people on how to engage in a, in a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know this for sure, and I did not have this conversation with him, but it, he sounds like a person who knows what he's doing uh, in a peaceful protest. Well, here's the thing, though, too, that and I'm, I'm speaking for the people at home. He's walking in front of the police office, the police. There are no people there. There, there aren't any protesters. There aren't any people who appear to be violating the curfew. And he's walking in front. No, it doesn't look like there's anybody. There. Right, and that's a strategy. What he did was he walked the whole line so that everyone would see him peaceful, walking slowly, and being non-aggressive with his hands up. And then he comes back after showing the police that he's a peaceful person. Then he comes back. Because let me ask you this. Why would he, for what reason would he want to provoke officers and then come back and tell everyone? I, I agree with you. Bird? I just, I, I'm yeah, playing so devil's advocate here absolutely, for you. Absolutely. Uh, I, and I also want to ask you about, does he, do you feel that this was excessive on the part of police. You know, at, at this point, the, the Humvee pulled in between the cameras and my client. Uh, I don't know if that was intentional. If it was, it was a great tactic. Uh, and I don't know if they did that intentionally or not. Right there, you can see I, I it. I believe that would be intentional. Well, if it was, uh, look, my goal right now is to, is to get my client free. And I, I don't want to engage in any kind of conversation that might uh, exacerbate the situation or might uh, antagonize uh, the officers in the Northwestern District. I just want my client free. So okay, I'm, you I don't want, want to him free. On that. And then what, what do you plan to say? Not guilty to what's next? Uh, I'm going to have to discuss that with him. Our conversation today was almost exclusively centered around his freedom. And he can't, the reason he's not free now is because there are so many people who have been arrested recently with the uprising that they just can't get to it. Th and that's it's correct. Just, yeah, uh, and also, it's overloaded. And also, you know, uh, the bails were, uh, the bail review hearings were shut down when the district courts were shut down. Yeah. And so nobody got their bail review hearing. What's his bail? Uh, uh, he doesn't have one set because he hasn't even seen yeah. the commissioner okay. yet, at least not as of the beginning of this interview. I've been checking my messages. I, uh, people are, are, are there to tell me when that happens. Yeah, it's been a lot of, a lot of interest in him. We're glad to get you on, and we hope when uh, that he's out soon and that he will come and speak to us as well. And, and we'll offer him the opportunity to explain to everyone who's been asking why he did what he, he did. He would welcome and that. And what happened behind the home. He would welcome that. He loves his community, he'd, and he'd love to speak for himself to his community. Stephen Patrick Beatty, thank you thank very much. Thank you, sir. Much. Thank very you very much. much. We appreciate it.